Now, it's very hard to, to get the formatting the way you want it. There are a lot of tools, but it's not like you're just in more, it's uh, case view, the template in case view doesn't work like Word does. It has a lot of underlying um, code like this to get numbers to, to fall into different places. You can call up not just mapping numbers, but you can call count numbers. You can call up uh, lead sheet groupings to, to show up in footnotes. And, um, but it gets a little tough when you're trying to format things because it's not exactly you, you have to get used to using caseware. They, they do have some very nice features. You can have what's called a floating underline. So you have a, a table set up for all your counts. And in that table, uh, it'll place an underline under the last non-skipped line. You know, because not all of your clients are going to have prepaid insurance or whatever it happens to be that you want to. We, we never show prepaid insurance, but just as an example, they may have prepaid something else, you know, prepaid rent. And um, <clears throat> so you, so in cases where they don't have prepaid rent, you, you know, you, and there's no account mapped, no accounts with balances mapped to that, ma that group, then you can set that row to skip and hide if all the balances are zero. And then if that's skipped, of course, you don't want to have a print a, a page that comes out with a bunch of blank areas in it so you want it to shrink and fill up the, you want the printout or what renders out of the document to, to shrink and, and, and fill up the space properly uh, to just look like it would if it were in Excel but then you have to the, 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 the end result is though is that you're gonna have to learn how to do this more technically difficult kind of programming just to to set up these automatic templates it's not just like you're just going to use Word and you're just going to type in what you want. And so if <clears throat> my only criticism of Caseware is if it had a more of an Excel-like in, uh, interface for case view, it would be gangbusters for, um, for the accounting world. But even uh, to call in a consultant from Caseware to go in and, and set one up for you, <clears throat> it may be worth the while to do uh, if you have all your ducks in, in a row, and you might be able to move on after they come in and they um, do their introduction, and they, you know, they, they do a tutorial and they have you set up a template with them in class, um, and you might learn some tricks. You may be able to get your own firm's uh, template implemented. And what's the advantage of this? Well, mistakes aren't going to happen because all those numbers that come from your trial balance are going to get pulled up. At the end of the day, if you know that your template has all the mapping numbers um, on it, and so and you know all your uh, count numbers on your trial balance are mapped to a mapping number, you know that your ending financial statement is going to include every single number that's in your trial balance. You know you're not going to miss anything. So you're not going to end up plugging net assets and embarrassing yourself. You know, if your successor auditor come back and say, hey, you were $100,000 off on your beginning net assets last year. <laughs> you know, you're, so math isn't going to be so long as you have the formulas right and you have someone in your firm that's able to keep track of how the formulas are constructed <clears throat> inside of caseware. I just wish it wasn't so... <laughs> Uh, I would never know to, to do an AM arrow div until, until I was told, right? And so that's the downside of caseware. I, I, I suspect that since it's, it's, hard, it's actually really harder to use caseware than, use, than it is to use Linux. So if, you, if you're able to build a caseware template, then you're beyond all the complaints I've ever really mentioned about Linux. You can use Linux and you can learn it, and you can probably learn it easier than and so there's no reason why, if you're of that technical caliber, you would want to set up your own email server or your own Samba server, at least to save your money a couple thousand, your company, a couple, you know, couple thousand or whatever they charge for uh, for all those different services in a, in a package. You, you, know, you can do it, you can learn it uh, if you have that kind of intelligence behind you, if you've already been doing this kind of thing. If you're new to it and you learn it, and if you realize you figure out you're actually able to do this, then the difficulty level shouldn't be any more difficult than it is to, to, to use Linux. And Linux is at least a tool to save money on server space. It's excellent server space. 
I wouldn't say it's as intuitive, or it's not going to have wizards to walk you through everything, but it is absolutely a great money saver if you, and a very, it, it's a, it is a learning experience. And so, anyway, so that's the advantage of using caseware, but you can also, in, in case view, but if, also in caseware, you can set up the different, once you've got everything mapped, you can, there's almost, almost automatic trial balances that'll print out and at least, at least it'll do is add up all the numbers for you into groups that mean something to you. And so if you insist on using Excel, you can always pop those numbers in if this is too hard for you. But you only have to do this once. In the, in the situation where you're using Excel and Word, every time you release a new financial statements, you have to do some input into those cells every single time. Uh, every year, <laughs> year after year, uh, you move the old numbers over to the right and, and, and just hope you didn't make a mistake and hope that you have the quality control for someone to go in there and do the math check. With this, after a while, if you know the math works, and there's certain things you'll know when you do these uh, financial statements that you have a complete set of math, your cash flow statement works, your, um, your net assets or retained earnings ties uh, on your income statement ties what's on the balance sheet, cash flow statement ties to cash you know you've got all <laughs> you know assets equals liabilities equals equity all those basic accounting uh, principles will uh, work for you to know that you at least have some level of quality control in place on your final result and after a while uh, after people check these things over and the math works you don't need to check the results of a formula again and again and again and again because you know that formula works and so you, you know your, you, you, if the number changes, you know that, you know, you know it's still going to be cell A versus plus cell B all the time. So it's got a very good, it's a very good situation to be in and uh, can, can help you get a long way in that, that regard. So I'm done. I'm exhausted. I've been doing a lot of this stuff. And also when you're doing case work, just another thing I'll mention. Is and one of the recent situations that I've been that I'm in, it'll actually help you find mistakes that other people have made on financial statements when if you take over, and um, <clears throat> also prevent help you prevent mistakes. And another good thing to do is if your accounting firm isn't that organized or, or structured, it's a good thing to go in and try to port all of your. Uh, old financial statements the, for the past couple years over to your current uh, caseware template to see how it scales. It'll help you catch bugs. Um, so, like for example, today I was doing maybe six or seven divisions and I, <clears throat> I added a function to be able to add a plus one or a plus two to the cash flow statement for rounding purposes or the cash for the balance sheet or the miscellaneous expense for the income statement because, you know, the effect of round, we're showing whole dollars, we're not doing pennies here. So um, and when I did that, I used some coding and I referred, I didn't refer to the variable for my E100 that I just described there. I, I referred to um, the actual CF configuration file. <clears throat> And then I was wondering, well, why is that one still showing up there when I changed to a different client? Oh, okay. I looked at, oh, that's a bug. Okay, so I found that. I'd switched to a different division, then the cash flow statement wouldn't work, and I figure, oh, I got that formula wrong in the cash flow statement. And as time goes on uh, with your cash flow statement, over over time, you, you'll you'll it'll be to the point where you don't need to change your formulas anymore. Um, and when you get there that's a good place to be, at least for the, the design you have. Now, as far as making a brand new design of anything, it's not always easy to get the look right, and so it can be a very tedious process when you're doing recoding or adding new features. So it took me about a week to implement the feature, whereas we can actually, without doing a consolidation, having to close one client in case we're, get out and go to another client in case we're to open it up or to pull two together, or things like that. I think the consolidation, I, I agree with Case where that it's probably a better situation. I take back what I just said. It's a better situation to have uh, one consolidated entity and uh, various 
clients underneath it, which a mistake I made is I imported all the accounts into one console, <laughs> into one client, so I had to add all these new features, and it took me about a week to re-implement this new coding style versus, you know, not using the map A-Y uh, relative column, but actually using the B-A-F-O. The only way I was able to get the filter to work in my, that I could figure out was by using the B-A syntax and not the A-Y for active year syntax. Um, so anyway, that, that's, that's, that's my suggestion. It takes a long time, but once you've ported all these different things o over, it's well worth the investment. You'll be at a point where you know, once you know all the math works, and you know, everything, you know, all in his features, as your the person you're working for uh, requests more features, I, or requests a new design for a template, you can implement that, then you go through a debugging phase, and when you're going through the debugging phase, you're probably going to want to port over past clients to see how those <clears throat> trial balances that are complete respond to that new template and uh, get the bugs out. <clears throat> if it gets through maybe 10 different clients, you can just copy over these uh, templates from one to the other. But you want to make sure you have one master. And once you know that that master will work for all your clients, you can very safely copy down that master to all the different clients. But also, every time you implement a new feature, you're going to want to go back and you want to retest it on those clients that you know already port. And if they don't port again, there's something wrong with the change you made. There's a bug in it, and you got to figure out what it is and compensate for it. So I'm done. I'm going to go home. It's been a long week. I've still got some work on this tomorrow, um, probably into next week on the current project that I'm working on. But I wanted to pass on what I've learned and what I found useful about casework. So if you're willing to do the work, it is well worth to do. But sometimes it can be time-consuming and frustrating.